It's time for the mystery guest. Uh, he is the editor-in-chief of this fine magazine, George. The nation's largest political magazine. Uh, he and the editors of George have a new book out, uh, just came out today, The Book of Political Lists. Very funny, very interesting. Please welcome John F. Kennedy, Jr. Coming. I... <laughs> we we try to keep it a mystery here, so you did a very good job. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you for coming out. I, I know you don't usually do these kind of shows, so it's a thrill to have you here. Now, I know you're a New Yorker. Jerry's moving to New York. Any uh, tips? Tips. <laughs> <laughs> There's this great soup place. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, in the 50s. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. How is the service? <laughs> Uh, he's, he's, he's an ill-tempered kind I of guy. I see. All right, I'll check it out. <laughs> well, let me ask you. I'm, I got to tell you, I, uh, you you've, uh, my judgment in following Mr. Seinfeld on the biggest night in TV, uh, they always tell you in politics, you got to watch who you follow. So I don't know what I was thinking, but it's a great honor to be here. Well, it's an honor to have this you. night. Yeah. Let me, now, you were, weren't you on, no, you weren't on Seinfeld, but you were portrayed, right? <laughs> My elbow, I think. It was yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, we had, was, the, the, you were in the famous contest yeah, episode. Yeah, well, that's you, right. That's the very, <laughs> I did. <laughs> now, now it, 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 was, it was funny because I, 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 I hadn't seen the episode, and I come out of my house in the morning, and... Everyone is like yelling across the street and I'm walking to work. You know, I was a district attorney then and people are driving by in their cars and honking. And I'm going, what, what, what the hell is going on here? So I walk in and, you know, every, as people start to say, oh, you know, right. I saw you last night. Were you on Seinfeld? Were you on Seinfeld? I said, no, no. What, what is everyone talking about? So they explained it. And then I, I had a trial and I walk, I walk into the court and the defendant is sitting there over there and he goes, you were on Seinfeld. <laughs> And I was like, no, no, I wasn't on Seinfeld. And he, he leans over to his lawyer and he goes, guy's an actor, too. No wonder he failed a bar exam. Oh, wow. Wow. Well. So, could we go back a second? Did you say you hadn't seen the episode? The only one. It was the only one. <laughs> But I got a tape, actually. The okay. office is very kind to <laughs> send it on. Now, you've been, uh, obviously, around politics your whole life. Do you think you will ever run? Would you ever run? Is that something? People always... Well, you know, other than uh, people asking me, were you on Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah. So that is the <laughs> second most frequently asked question. Um, I, you know, I, I'm, being an editor of a political magazine, you're, you're, you're able to be uh, in politics without really being in politics. Right, you know? right. So it's like... Like being the vice president, I guess. For yeah. <laughs> you, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's. Uh, Is it? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I have a great time doing that, and we all know that politics is a tough profession these days, but um, I think a very rewarding one. Well, the magazine is terrific. I know. Uh, I, I look through it because it gives me great ideas for jokes. It's, really? It's, well, I, I like it because it's. Oh, no, no, it is. Because. It, I mean, sometimes you read political magazines, it's all sort of. Very dry, right. whereas you guys always come at it from a yeah. funny angle, which right. kind of sparks. Right. And you always do interesting covers. You always have uh, people playing. Yeah. Like you had, who was Dennis Rodman? What political figure was he? Uh, no, no, Charles Barkley. Oh, Barkley, that's what it yeah, was. Yeah, he was George Washington. George Washington. <laughs> and uh, Harrison Ford was uh, Abraham Lincoln. Right, right, right. And uh, Howard Stern was George Washington. Well, there you go. Which, there was a remarkable similarity there. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, we were, we've always actually been, you know, trying for, to get you on the cover to do. You think so? Yeah. Who would I? Yeah. Uh, well, well, actually, I think we... We have, uh, we happen to have one Is this? Here. Oh, I will, uh, I'd love to do it. Who, do you, who would I? I think it's very... Oh, that's lovely. Lovely. Has anyone seen this? It's, uh, I see, that's... <laughs> lovely. And I'm, a, and I'm a handsome woman, very busty, apparently. I'm a, a very comely. busty woman. Well, now we're busting people for pictures. Let me ask you something, because I know in your life, I always see you, you always seem very dignified and avoid this and avoid that. And one day I opened George, and there is a picture of you, naked, in your own magazine. Wait, show, wait we have the picture. Show, there you are right there. Oh, now, naked. Now, 
How do you know he's naked? I can't tell if he's naked. Yeah, exactly. exactly. He looks like he's wearing shorts. Exactly. And running, and yeah. running shoes. No, no. The he man... could have a very small tuxedo on. <laughs> All right. You now, might not be wearing pants. Exactly. Under there. No one knows that. Now, were you naked in the photo? Uh, I wasn't actually. I was. Oh. I had. I was wearing pants and 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 shoes. <laughs> you would have perhaps had Newt Gingrich uh, nude from the shoulders down. I don't think anybody wants yeah, to see so? that. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was. You know, everyone always says that no one reads editors' letters, um, and they read that one. So, <laughs> what are you going to say? <laughs> it, it, it worked for the time being, but. Now, what is the Monica Lewinsky poem that is in here? Explain oh. this. Oh, do we have to? I guess we should. Well, we should. What, we, we, um, we happen to have someone who sent us um, Monica Lewinsky's poem that she wrote in ninth grade. Actually, not, not in ninth grade, when she was a nine-year-old. And I, I know I'm going to rot in hell eternally for this, but, but I, can I maybe just give Read it a the, sample? Yeah, give a sample. Okay. Um, it was written... Uh, the, the poem is a poignant rumination on how, quote, I can be a delicious lunch, dinner, or breakfast, if you're weird. She goes on to describe herself, quote, as a round and flat piece of dough with lots of topping. I am a mouth's best friend. I make you say, yum, yum. <laughs> it's amazing how kids know at a young age what they're going to do with their life. Well, this here is the, uh... Now, this was fascinating, because this is a you great like sort of reference book, uh, you know, yeah. just looking up odd things. It's, it's a book of celebrity lists. What is your... Uh, no, political, political I'm sorry, political lists. Political I mean, celebrity. Oh, it's, it's almost the same. Yeah, yeah. What is your favorite? What is your favorite? Well, there's a lot of them. I mean, you know, we tried to basically do, have a kind of a resource book about politics that also had uh, some funny things in there. And, and so that, you know, the whole problem with politics is people often think that it's dull and boring and, right. and they don't really appreciate some of the drama or some of the history or some of the funny parts. So um, there are uh, everything from uh, code names of presidents to Jimmy Carter's uh, ten, list of ten favorite desserts that he insisted to... Uh, <laughs> Richard what? Nixon's protocol at state dinners. What was the women? What was it? The women that ran oh, for there's president. Women who ran for president who couldn't vote for themselves. There was, um, you know, we, there's, there's obviously lists of men who ran for president who shouldn't be able to vote for themselves. But the women, um, one of them, there were two. One of them was named Victoria Woodhull. She ran in uh, for president in 1872. She's not. No one really knows about this, but she, uh, she was a free love candidate, and she had two husbands, and she got 3,000 votes. And uh, she, she, one of her suitors was Cornelius Vanderbilt. And before she ran for president, she used to get stock tips from him. And she opened up her own brokerage house in New York and made a killing. So she was really a woman, a very modern woman way before her time. Well, that's what's fun. It makes you realize there's nothing new, really, yes, under the sun. Well, I mean, everything that's been done has sort of been done. Yeah. But it's very funny, just odd facts about various political yeah. figures. Oh. Well, listen, it's, uh, of course, the Book of Political Lists and, of course, George the Magazine. Thanks so much Thank for coming. So much. Really a pleasure to meet you. Kennedy Jr. I do. I want to thank our guests, Daryl Hyman. Thank you very much, Sunday Night Live. Thank Great. you very funny man. <laughs> Story Spelling Trick is the movie. It opens Friday. And of course, Luscious Jackson. Electric Honey is the CD. I want to thank you for bearing with us tonight. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to do jokes when, uh, you know, terrible things happen in the news. And uh, I think we've all were affected. And I'm trying to understand why so much, you know. I mean, for me, growing up in Massachusetts and the Kennedys are so much a part of my life as a kid. You know, I remember my mom crying when John and Caroline were in the funeral, you know, and it, and it sticks in your mind. And then when he came here and sat in the chair, it struck me that at what point did I think that my life would ever intersect with his life, you know? And he really made an impression on everybody here. Genuinely a nice man. I mean, all the Kennedy jokes we've done over the years, he, he could have been nicer and kinder, signed autographs, said hello. And then my wife and I were talking about it last night, you know, and you realize there, there are people that you just want to see grow old, just, just for the fun of it, because their life is so close to your life.
you know, people like him and, and Princess Di, and, and you realize these people never really did any bad. Whenever you saw them, you smiled and you felt happy for them, and you wanted them to have a good life, you know? And for those of you who think somebody has something more than you, you go, oh boy, and then something tragic like this happens. So, uh, thanks for making the job easier tonight. I, it, it, like I said, doing the monologue, I said, how do you go out and do a monologue? But that's the job we have to do here, and try and be silly and try and maybe cheer people up. But please don't think it's, it's not on our minds, because if it's on your minds, it's on our minds too. So, I just want to say, uh, you know, say a prayer. And God bless him, and he was a very, very nice man. That's all. Good night, everybody.